Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. Today, I've got a video. Honestly, I just want to share a little bit of, a, of, of my hobby story, like my watch journey. And this is only just a small segment of it, but... In one of the watch groups that I'm in, we had a pretty good conversation that was floating around about Helios and their new design. And um, and then, of course, everyone, when you talk about Helios, they almost immediately compare it to or go back to the Seaforth. And so that got me thinking, like, oh, and I've got a couple of Seaforths. So I want to kind of do a video talking about going down the Helios rabbit hole. And so what I want to do with this video, I kind of did something I thought, I thought it was funny. So when I think about the way that like I went down the rabbit hole, it, it reminds me of the Beverly Hillbillies and the theme song from the Beverly Hillbillies. And so I can't play that song, right? Cause it's probably still copyrighted or whatever. And I'm not trying to get a strike, but I wrote my own lyrics to it. And, uh, and before I get into this, yes, I know I'm a terrible singer and I'm still going to do it anyway. I'm hoping that this might be funny to, to somebody. I don't know. But, um, yeah, if you think about it, if people only did things because they were the best at it, we wouldn't have anywhere near the innovations, um, and, and amazing, amazing things that we have today. So anyway, I'm going to do this, even though I know I'm not the best at it. But here it goes. Here's a little story about a man named Josh. Grew up humbly poor and never cared for being posh. And then one day he discovered Helios. And down the rabbit hole he went like he was a fool. Absorbed, that is. Engrossed. Captivated. So yeah, that's the preface. That's the preface to going down this Helios rabbit hole. So let's just bring one up here and let's take a look at it. This is, and this isn't going to be a review video and you know, I don't want to be a review channel. So this is just for fun. Um, this is the first Helios that I ever bought. And you'll notice that it has the stainless steel diver's bezel on it, right? It's the 60 minute bezel. And this lecture on it is fantastic. The grip, this coinage right here, is the most grippiest and best that I've ever experienced on any watch. And so that's just my opinion there. But you can see that it does not have the date. So for those of you that are really into Helios, you're going to notice a couple of things. First, you're going to know that the Seaforth had a couple of different generations. And to my knowledge, all of the ones here are Generation 3, which was released August of 2019, maybe? And don't quote me on that date. And Jason took down all the stuff from the website, so it's really hard to look it up. I take screen captures of everything that I buy and um, that I track in and out. And so I probably have this information in my uh, backup hard drive storage. But... Um, but yeah, so all of these are the Generation 3. They all should have the ETA movements. I don't know if it tells us on the back. 200 meter water resist, automatic, c fourth. Um, yeah, but anyway, so here's the trick. It's got a couple of different dial colors that they came in. And then the other options or the variants that you could get were difference of bezels. And I think they had a 12-hour bezel. They had this stainless steel bezel they have the fixed bezel which you'll see all the other ones in the back here the fixed bezel and um and this isn't counting you know the gmts and some of the other watches that helios put out right this is really just looking at the seaforth and so when i found out about these a uh, buddy of mine oh my buddy jay oh jay now that i realized it dude you're the enabler you're the one you're the reason i went down this rabbit hole that just dawned on me anyway I wanted a baby blue watch. And so Jay, being the good buddy that he is, he sends me a picture of this baby blue 
absolutely stunning. Pastel blue, I think is what they called it. Um, Helio Seaforth. And I looked at the price of it, and I was like, no, 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 no. There is no way I'm spending that much on a watch. Because not only were they at MSRP, I thought they were expensive, but they were sold out. And everywhere, they go for a premium. Like, they go for a steep premium, actually. And they trade and and stay at that steep premium value. So, anyway, I was like, nope not going to do it. I was pretty early on in my, in my watch journey. So I was still doing Casios and I was eyeing a couple of Seikos and, um, well, let's just say it was nowhere near the insanity that my hobby and collection has since become. But I was like, no, Jay, I appreciate you sending me that, but there's no way I can do that. But then just like most addictions do, Rose. And in the back of my mind, I just kept going, man, that Helios. Hmm. That was pretty. Oh, and the reviews are amazing on it. Well, it does have the Etta movement. Hmm. No, they're top quality finish in QC. Well, they trend at a secondary or in the secondary market at more than what the MSRP is. So, slowly but surely, just like all y'all addicts, you know how it is, right? Justifying anything that I could to try to convince myself that this was worth it and watched it. And not only by having one, but four of them here, you could see that I talked myself into that one, right? That didn't have to twist my arm too much, I don't think. But I want to talk about the craziness of why I have four of them, because the reality is I really only wanted one. And had I had gotten this one in the beginning, I wouldn't have all these other ones. And so that's kind of the story that I want to share with you. So when I was talking about all the variants, um, I wanted the pastel blue. I love a date function on a watch. So I wanted it with the date and I wanted it with the fixed bezel because I just love the sleek look that that fixed bezel has. And divers are a dime a dozen. I can get a diver anytime and I'm not even diving. I don't even go swimming with my watches. So um, I barely wear them in the rain. Um, and honestly, when I do, I probably wear a G-Shock. So um, anyway, here, here it was. And as I mentioned a second ago, these are sold out and they've been sold out. And Jason produces, you know, well, none, no more. And he's got a couple of other models he did, but you really have to wait for someone to either realize they didn't connect with this watch, which is rare. Everybody who gets these things love them. And so you have to either wait for somebody to, to realize, oh, I'm not connecting with this one. Let me go ahead and pay it forward. Or you get people like maybe where I'm at now, where I have thoroughly enjoyed these. And now I kind of want to pay them forward and use that to either fund another, you know, rabbit hole or, or to do something else. Right now, as y'all know, oh, let's do a wristwatch check. Right now, I'm wearing this all black metal Casio G, right? And the G-Shock rabbit hole is the one I am just neck deep in right now. But, um, but yeah, so, so that's where we're at with these Halios. I totally connected with them and 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 that's not the reason i'm selling them i'm i'm probably gonna sell them because um it's time it's time and i think if you talk to some people that have been around the hobby for a while they'll be able to relate or they'll be able to tell you i've got some friends who've been in this hobby for like decades and and they'll be able to tell me like yeah there's seasons you know um interests change things come and go watches change and if you want to continue to experience new stuff you know everybody has a fairly finite uh amount of funds and money um and so you got to be able to like part with one to, to get another one and that's just part of it it's part of the cycle um some friends in my discord group call it flippers for life flippers for life because they just get a watch because they want to experience it and then they turn around and flip it and so that they can continue to experience more and more watches and so maybe this is me embracing that flipper for life mentality a little bit because i'm going to be honest with you i've only sold two watches 
No, I take that back. I sold three. I sold one the other. Technically, I didn't sell it. My buddy Jay sold one with me. But prior to me selling some watches now, I've only ever sold my Rolex Submariner and my bronze Zelos Sky Raider Skeleton. Those are the only two watches that I've parted with. And so now I need to part with some more. Anyway, so with the variants, I wanted this pastel blue, but I wanted it in the fixed bezel, and I wanted the date option, which on these, is the date is at the 6th, and it's a color match date, which is a big plus. Um, and so that's what I was on the hunt for. And so for those of you who don't know, when we talk about the hunt, it means you got something in your sights, you got it on your wish list, whatever. But because like these are sold out, you have to keep an eye out for one to become available. And whether you do that on forums, I don't really use the forums, um, but Facebook groups, you know, watch groups, uh, Discord, whatever means you got. Reddit, I think is a popular one. I don't use Reddit either. But you got to wait for them to become available. And so that's what I did. Now, this one is the first one to become available. And even though it wasn't the variant that I wanted, I immediately took it. Immediately. And I paid a premium. I, I'm sorry. I paid a premium for this. Oh, man, that's a tongue twister. Um, yeah, no, I, I legit paid a premium for this. Um, and I was like, yep, let's get it. Because one, they're super rare. Two, this will allow me to just experience Helios overall, which I ain't gonna lie, is top notch. It really is top notch. And it'll give me a sense of what this dial looks like in person. Because you can see it in photos and you can see it whatever, but you never know what a watch is gonna look like until you see it in person, or more importantly, until you put it on the wrist. And and then wear it in all the different shades, lighting conditions, whatever it is that your day takes you through. And then you'll realize, oh, I do. Or maybe in some cases you don't connect with a watch. So that's how this one came to be, right? Now, next came this one. And this has got little two stories to it. Now, you'll notice I've got this one on the Geno or Geno. I'm guessing it's Geno bracelet. In typical fashion, I can't pronounce anything properly. So y'all just tell me down in the comments how wrong I am. But this is the pastel blue with the fixed bezel. But as you can see, it doesn't have the date. And so I thought I was one step closer to getting my goal, which was fixed bezel pastel blue date combination, right? And so I immediately jumped on this. And of course, oh man, my, my fellow addicts, tell me if you've done this. I bought this one and then told myself, oh, that's okay. I'll sell this old one I have. No problem. And then look, they're both sitting here. They're both sitting here. Now, I know some folks that have the will and determination to sell a watch prior to getting another watch, and that's great, but here's the here's the trick. Even as quickly as I could probably flip one of these and sell it, when these become available, they sell out in minutes. Minutes. And so, yeah, I can't, I'm not trying to dilly-dally, right? If I put, when I put these all up for sale, I'm guessing all four of them are going to be sold at a premium, like it probably allow me to break even, and, um... And that'll be probably within 24 hours. And that's in a somewhat of a down economy, a somewhat of a down to market. And of course, it's debatable on whether the economy or market is down. Well, no, it's pretty across the board. The economy is down. Whether the watch market is down or not is, uh, is debatable depending on who you talk with. But anyway, so I found this one. And of course, I was like, oh, I'll sell that other one I have. And... I got one step closer. Now, the good thing that this one helped me to do, though, is I had realized that I loved the dial based off of this first one back here. And then this one helped me realize that I did prefer the fixed bezel. I like the clean styling of that. So that then went down the rabbit hole of I found out that you know, bracelet would fit on it. And I was looking at other options. And this bracelet is absolutely amazing it's an investment but it is worth every 
heavy. I mean, it's a little heavy. I'm going down that titanium rabbit hole also. This is a little heavy compared to some of my titanium stuff. Well, compared to all of my titanium stuff. But, um, but anyway, it is legit and it fits great on here. And uh, yeah, so I went down the Genoa rabbit hole, went down the Helios rabbit hole. I'm, I'm halfway through my journey and this one becomes available. And so let me, let me get that. This dial with that sunburst effect is so beautiful. It deserves a little polish. And if you play the random Rob thumb wiping game, you know, and you want to do that here too by proxy, you're welcome to it. But um, here we go. So I found this gray dialed C, uh, C4. And it had the fixed bezel and it had the date. And so the way I did the logic in my head, again, watch addicts, tell me if y'all do this. I had learned from these back here that I liked the blue dial. And this one showed me that I liked the fixed bezel. And so this one I bought to tell me if I really did want the date function. And so I said, you know what? Let's get this like all the other ones. It came up and I immediately bought it. And just like before, I told myself, oh, I'll sell these. I'll, I'll sell these other ones. I just got to get the one that I really want. And then I'll sell these. Here's what I didn't know. I didn't know that this gray dialed variant, particularly because of that sunburst effect, I did not realize that it was going to be become my favorite watch. Um, my favorite alias. Um, that pastel blue is absolutely stunning. But there's something about this. And you see that it still has got a little hint of blue. Let me get this zoomed in if I can. Here we go. The C fourth is like a bluish color, and the minute tracks at the five. It's white minute track, but every at the five, it's a blue in the same accent. And so I think this is taking styling cues from the Rolex OP39. Um, and I did a whole video comparing the Borealis to this to uh, the mention of why well, at that time I think I mentioned the date just, but it was really the OP. And, uh, but yeah, so here we are and this, this, so here, here's what I'll say. I'm probably going to sell these other three and at least for now, I'm going to keep this one. And then we've got to see how long until I flip this, find it a good home because, uh, you know, I don't wear these as much as I, as I maybe should. And so, but when you have over 300 watches in your collection, that's what happens. So now let's take it up to the one that I really wanted from the get-go. This is it. Fixed bezel date. And let's put these two side by side so you can see them in here. You can see that the blue is a matte finish, right? It doesn't have the sunburst, but it is a beautiful, beautiful shade of blue. And here we are. And so I got this one. And at that point, I'd experienced these other three. And... And as much as I love this one, I don't love it as much as I first did. Or I don't think I love it now as much as if I would have gotten it at the very beginning when I got this one. So how that works, I don't know. Again, you guys that have been in this watch hobby for longer than I have, tell me how that goes over the years. How, do, how does that go? And is there anything wrong with it? I don't think there is. I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, taste changing. And so, um, keeping the hobby fresh. So here we go. Flippers for life. That's my video. Until we talk again, please remember what really matters. And that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane.